Hello and welcome to The Bike Show. Later in this episode, we'll be taking a look at a recently held event called the Stop Cock or something. Stoff Scop. Stoff Scop. Stoff Scop. And of course, we'll be checking out some new products. But first, our test this week focuses on superbikes. It's been a great year for new superbikes, or more specifically, for new Japanese superbikes. He's right, you know, and two superbike legends have been completely reborn. And I have brought the very best of them. It's the Honda CBR1000 Fire Blade. It's the lightest, it's the best put together, and like me, it's the best looking. And like you, it's the slowest. That's oh, great. Good comment. <laughs> and I think that leads me on nicely to showing you the bike that I've brought for this test. This gentleman, as you can plainly see, is a Suzuki. It is also a legend. It is the GSX-R1000, and unlike the Honda, it actually brings some proper new mechanical innovation with its variable valve timing. It is, as GSX-Rs have always been, a man's bike. So are you riding it, then? All right, an old man's <laughs> bike. No, that doesn't sound right. It's, uh, it's, it's brilliant, is what it is. So, Don, tell me, what have you brought, since we've got the two new ones? See, I've bought something that these two have not lived up to. Oh, really? It is this over here, the Kawasaki ZX-10. Now, I don't know if you gentlemen have seen a little series called World Superbikes. I mean, there's a Honda there, but, uh, well, you don't really see it a lot because, well, it's at the back. And Suzuki, I mean, ugh, they haven't even been brave enough to actually enter a bike. But if you look right out front, a certain gentleman named Johnny Ray on one of these is winning by a long That's way. That's a really entertaining little story, Donovan, but you know as well as I do that what he rides is not, is not this. One of these. It really is. I think you see it. It even has headlights on it. Oh, really? There's stickers on the race bike. Just out of interest, Don, we've ridden this recently. It's still basically the 2016 model, and I'm sorry, without even getting on it, it's not going to measure up. I think you gentlemen are going to be surprised. You're right. I hope so. Well, to be surprised, we need a venue, and, uh, well, have you noticed, gentlemen, we're on a track. We don't have to go far this time. Slight problem. Yes? It's 220 metres long this time. Yes, it is. And there are nine corners. What's wrong? You've got a straight of at least 20 metres occasionally, then. <laughs> I don't think we'll ever get out of first gear. OK, don't worry, gents. We do know a place where we can test them properly. Red Star Raceway, a track we know well, and a track that is tight, twisty, and hard work on bikes with big horsepower. The GSX-R is a legend because it's always been a bit of a, a rough old bad boy. Loads of power, acceptable handling, and everybody knew and if you rode a GSX R1000, you were some kind of animal, a hero for riding such a beastly motorbike. But, truth be told, things have moved on in the years since the GSX R last had a decent upgrade. And now it's possible to get a superbike that is both mental and sensible. Suzuki hasn't lost anything in the engine department, but it has gained a whole load of agility in the cornering department. One area of the GSX R1000 is much, much better than it ever was, is in these sort of turns, tight, and they come one after the other, one direction, then the next, then another direction. So you're continually flicking from side to side, and now, this bike does it much better than it ever did. It feels much more composed when it's on his ear. Boy, does it explode! Yeah, it bloody well explodes out of the turns. But I love the way it feels so planted. Compared to the GSX-Rs of old, this is a much more refined, sophisticated bike. Yes, it's still scarily fast, but it feels more in control, more, 
well, easy to ride, which is handy when you've got 200 horsepower at your disposal. The blade can be a bit sharp and steering, but it doesn't feel as stable as this. This is more akin to the Kawasaki, but I don't know, it just feels a bit more precise. And then, in a long turn like this, I'm telling you, the GSXR never used to feel like this. On your knee, all the way around, and it just is a solid as a rock. We've waited a long time for Honda to bring the Fireblade onto the same page as its rivals, and inevitably, the spotlight is on the new bike. It simply has to deliver. And guess what? It does. It's physically small, light, super nimble, and despite being slightly down on power over the Suzuki and the Kawasaki, it's just as blisteringly fast. I've always been of the opinion that a superbike needs a super rider. A very definite and very high level of skill to really get the best out of them. But the thing about this Fireblade is that it seems to be really accessible if, like me, you're not very good. And I'm sure I'm not alone. Oh yes, we all think we're MotoGP material, but we're not. And what we need is a bike that helps us to imagine that we deserve a place on the grid. The Honda is that bike. Somehow, Honda has managed to make a bike that both expert and beginner can ride, and more importantly, feel good on. It's amazing that three bikes that share the same specification can feel so different. All are intimidatingly fast, but that's where the comparisons end. The GSXR feels raw, like it wants to kick your head in. The ZX10 feels big and stable. But the Fireblade, for all its lightness and size, it also feels stable and steady. It makes you feel like a superbike hero. Let's just get this out of the way immediately. The GSX-R and the Fireblade feel tiny. The ZX-10R, on the other hand, does not feel that way. It feels a tad broad and soft. Not that broad and soft is a bad thing, mind you. And in all honesty, while the GSX-R and the Fireblade are forever giving you feedback, lots of feedback, lots of feedback, you're in the corner, you're getting feedback, you're getting feedback, that's a good thing when your name is, say, Marquez or Rossi or one of those guys, because you want feedback. Whereas when your name is Joe and you're doing a track day, feedback can be a little bit worrying because it keeps reminding you how close to death you are. Whereas with this, not quite as much feedback. It, it sort of inspires confidence, you know? It makes you feel good about yourself. You can just lay back and enjoy your riding. Well, not really laid back. Especially not with this, I mean, you're going to get to about, where are we now? Sweet stars, the sweet spot's about 8,000, 9,000, below that there's not much, above that there's this. We have always thought that the motor on the ZX-10R is strong, but it seems that since its launch last year, the IT techs at the factory have been doing some overtime work on its software. Now it's a completely different animal. Matt says that the GSX-R is mental. That's because he hasn't ridden this yet. That's a lot of forwardness. That's what that is. Forwardness. A lot of it. Oh, there's a lot of theater there. A lot of theater. You shut off the throttle and it snarls and it pops and it growls and ah, you know, it's angry. Very Kawasaki. That's exactly how Kawasaki should be. So, the Kawasaki needs anger management classes, and so will we, because trying to pick a winner is surely going to end up in some 